What's happening, everyone? What's going on? I'm your host, RJ Carbone, and you are listening to episode 426 of BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. We also do MMA now, too, but we're doing Knicks tonight. Welcome to episode 426. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. Um, yeah, I did miss the last uh, two episodes. I did miss the Charlotte Hornets game. And then I also missed the Milwaukee Bucks game on Friday. Um, <clears throat> I was in Atlantic City. <laughs> so, kind of hard to do episodes from there. Yeah, I had a good time. <clears throat> I went down on Friday night. Or, yeah, Friday afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, you know, I had a good time. Ate a ton of food. Lost a ton of money. And came back broke. So, you <laughs> know. It might be a few um, until you see our next RJ's Parlay segment here on BD4. I will say that. Uh, But it was good. Friday night we went down, had a big dinner, uh, went to see Adam Sandler, actually sat in the front row, front and center. Pretty cool experience. Um, Sandler, Schneider was there. Um, They had the other guy come on late, last minute. One of the dudes who's always in Adam Sandler's movies. Uh, shit. Can't tell. I, I forget the guy's name. Um, he's just like the weirdo, though. Dude, he's always talking weird. That's as best as I can describe it. It's because I'm not the biggest. Like, I don't know a ton of Adam Sandler's movies. I, I know the movies, but I haven't. I'm not a freak, you know, of a diehard. I don't know a lot of characters and movies. I'm not a movie guy. But. It's the dude who's, I don't know, I don't fucking know. I can't tell you a specific scene, a specific movie, but he was there. Uh, It was a great show. So we sat there in the front row, and the, uh, I think there was like a couple behind us who was um, a deaf, a deaf couple, so they couldn't hear. And they had two interpreters, sign language, you know, sign language um, interpreters in the front. So they were the second row, the deaf couple. Um, and then it was me and five others who I were with, who I was with in the front row right behind, right in front of them. And then the interpreters were facing us. So the, uh, the people who were deaf could hear the show and could see the sign, could, sorry, could see the sign language. And um, it was I bring this up because it was just funny because Sandler noticed it and he kept egging on the interpreters with like explicit words and just just shit that he wanted to see what the signal was for certain acts. And he kept egging the interpreters on to see them do those gestures. It was pretty fucking hilarious. Uh, But it was a great show. The casino going into the casino for the first time. You know, I thought I was going to win a little bit of money. I started off dreadful. Then I had like a brief moment where I won one or two games. I think one game. Yeah, twice maybe. I think I won twice maybe. And then I kept and I went back to losing. So that's all I do is lose money. We do it all the time here on the show. We we um, talk about our parlays and our parlays never go well. So I, I'm going to stick to sports betting. I'm not going to go in any more casinos for a bit because at least with sports betting, I have some form of control of what happens. I use my skill, my knowledge of this certain sport, the game that's going on and whatever I bet on. Um, in the casinos, it's just straight luck. It's all on the machine, whatever the machine does for you, right? You have no control in anything there. So good experience though. The food, unbelievable. Ate at these... Very fancy, great restaurants, and um, fortunate enough to where I didn't have to pay a single penny for that. So I guess that's the the win that I get from it. Um, amazing time, but um, that's why I missed the last two episodes. I was exhausted the week before I went, um, and then the one episode that we were gonna do on the Bucks couldn't do because I was literally in Atlantic City as a. Uh, as that game happened. Sorry, the game, the Hornets game before the Bucks game, I was home, but it was the day before I went. 
I thought I, I think I said week. Uh, it was the day before I went for that Charlotte Hornets game where I was going to record, but I was just too tired. I wanted to rest up. I had a lot going on that day. School, work, and then I had a pack. But we're back. The Knicks um, are on a two-game losing streak. Uh, but we're going to talk about last night's game, which took place on Sunday, the 30th. As I'm recording, it's Monday the 31st, and the Knicks collapsed in Cleveland last night. Um, and hey, what's what's the Knicks? What's the Knicks season without that, right? I mean, the first collapse is in the books, so you can officially say that the Knicks are underway. We are officially officially into the 2022-23 Knicks season because we have gotten our first collapse. It's in the books. It's officially a Knicks season. But yeah, I mean, both teams were hot out the gate in the first quarter of this game um, against the Cavs here. It was on the road. Uh, but both teams get off to a hot start. The Cavs get off to a hot 5 nothing start. They're firing away from three the entire first half. But Mitchell was working early in the first quarter. I think he had 15 points, hitting a bunch of triples. Uh, the Knicks, though, make an even bigger 10 nothing run to go up 10-5. to um, They have a decent second quarter, the Knicks do, behind their bench unit. You had you know, D-Rose quickly, Obi Toppin, Isaiah Hartenstein producing. You go into the breakdown just three points. Uh, and then the Knicks have an even bigger third quarter <laughs> where they outscore Cleveland 34-22. You got some big-time contributions from the starters. Brunson putting points on the board. I think he had a dozen. Um, Randall was doing a bit of everything. Evan Fournier had a couple of nice baskets and even a few stops. Uh, had a steal in there. The Knicks go into the fourth quarter up nine points. And that's where things just went to crap. Um, as Cleveland quickly erased a nine-point deficit and won by 13 points. They they uh, outscored the Knicks 37-15 to 15 in the fourth quarter. You had Mitchell being Mitchell. He finished with 38 points, 12 assists, uh, eight three-pointers. Kevin Love turning back the clock to 2013, finished with 29 points on eight friggin' three-pointers himself. And then Dean Wade quadrupling his career points per game with 22 points last night on six three-pointers made. Awful. The Knicks lose their second straight game, as I said, 121 to 108 in Cleveland last night, now falling to three and three on the season. So on the season, they're three and three. Um, but this game was just dreadful. I mean, listen, I, 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 I think it comes down to, to defense, three point defense. The, the three point defense was the theme of the night last night. The Knicks let the Cavs just run amok. They, they Cleveland launched 53 pointers last night. They got 53s up in the air. 34 is league average so far this season. 41 leads the league. I think it's Portland in attempts. The Knicks allowed 50 of them last night. 50. And Cleveland made damn near half of them. They were 23 for 50. Kevin Love was left wide open all night. I mean, I guess the Knicks never really learned from last season where he knocked down Six triples in a January game. Then I think in April he had a big you know, three for something game from downtown. He torches them all the time from three. He torched Obi Toppin last night. Dean Wade was also left wide open as well. R.J. Barrett was playing stupid defense. Fouling twice, I believe, for a four-point play. Randall was, was also getting lost on ball screens. Everybody was open for Cleveland. Everybody was scoring. Everybody. <laughs> Cleveland in the fourth quarter connected on eight triples. The Knicks the entire game connected on ten triples. Zero in the fourth quarter. So it was awful defensively. Awful. Um, sloppy team play. Terrible turnovers. Terrible fouls. Ill-advised shots down the stretch on the offensive end. Cam Reddish was doing shit that you just cannot do. That one ridiculous shot under the basket just so he could try to get his points. That was 
awful. Um, I would have pulled him right there. Um, and I think he did get pulled not long after. Fournier, you had him chucking a three from damn near 30-something feet away with more than half the time remaining on the shot clock once they got that first rebound. Taking a terrible shot there. Obi Toppin, two quick turnovers. He's, you know, a bad pass and a travel within the first two minutes of the fourth quarter. Quickly looked bad down the stretch. The entire second unit just did not have that same burst of energy that they had in the second quarter um, and in the third quarter even. But the entire, just, you you have to, you're playing the Cleveland Cavs. So you got to come into the game knowing that it's the Cavs, right? You got to come in knowing it's a team with much more talent than you, even without Darius Garland. And you got to tell yourselves, all right, well, we're if we're going to win this game, it's going to have to be one of those games where we defeat them with our energy, our energy, effort, you know, just outwork them. And we're also going to have to play smarter than them. But the Knicks didn't do that. They didn't have that that extra energy. They didn't even play harder. And they certainly did not play smarter than Cleveland last night. Um I'll give them credit. They did play fast. They continue to try and up the tempo. I um, think they won the fast break last night, 28 points to 14 points. So they doubled them there. They took care of the paint. They were plus two on the boards. They outscored Cleveland 64-32 in the paint. But it came down to two problems. It came down to three-point defense. Cleveland shot 46% on 50 attempts, like we said. And the Knicks, 37% on 27 attempts. Just a massive difference. So three-point defense and just dumb mistakes all around. Um, The ball movement was another thing that was awful. It slowed again last night. Even on the Friday game versus Milwaukee, it wasn't great. But last night, the ball was just going side to side. Uh, It was just slower ball movement in general. Also, the body movement, players were just standing still off the ball. No cuts. And that's also what I mean by knowing your opponent. Again, to beat the Cavs, the Knicks were going to have to work as a team. And they did not. A lot of guys going for their own last night. Barrett, Fournier, Randall. The starters didn't really let Jalen Brunson take that point guard role. They went away from that last night. Even Derrick Rose, I thought, could have gotten some more reps in. But Knicks were doing a lot of one-on-one, and that's the problem. The Knicks don't have one guy on their roster that can consistently beat you 1v1, which is why they have to play together. Um, So, just overall bad. We'll talk a little more when we get back from break, but I'm not going to try to drag this episode on. I want to get this one over with. Um, and then we'll just scrap it and hopefully talk about a win on Wednesday night. But um, we're going to head to break real quick. And when we get back, we'll talk more. Stay with us. Be right back. Hey, guys. So if you are a listener of the podcast often and you want to know where to find me on social media, you can find me on Facebook at BD4. You can find me on Twitter at bd 4 Pod. And you can also find me on Instagram at Rob J. Carbone. BD4 is located on many different platforms. You can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. And if you do there, be sure to give us a five-star rating and review. You can listen to it on Spotify. But you can also watch the podcast on both Spotify and YouTube. BD4 is available on many other platforms as well. All you got to do is search it up. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and much more. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. Talking Knicks here for episode 426. Rough game last night. Um, Yeah, in this one, in my opinion, it just comes down to the Knicks not playing well as a team. Okay. I can't jump on the I hate Tibbs 
bandwagon again right now. At least not right now. It's early in the season. Okay, it's it's six games. You're a three and three Knicks team who just played a high end contender, two games in a row. But Tibbs last night, not much wrong. Um, the fans wanted better rotations. I I think that was the biggest critique last night. But it's like. The second unit, that's, you know, we, we always want to see the second unit. Younger guys, you know, more athletic, all that. They didn't have it in the fourth quarter last night like they did in the first half. You, like, you saw Julius Randle in the third quarter. He played very well. You saw Obi Toppin in the fourth quarter trying to defend. Non-existent. Did you see IQ? Really, everybody besides D. Rose at the time was looking in that fourth quarter looking like garbage fluid. They really were. And Tibbs saw that, and he made adjustments. As soon as the Cavs came within a point and turned that nine-point deficit into one point in the fourth quarter there with about seven and a half to go, you know, Mitchell pulls up, cans that three-pointer. That's when Tibbs... Started taking the bench out of the game and plugging back the starters. As he should have. Everybody's always crying for these in-game adjustments and for tips to start going with the flow of the game and not just plugging in these fixed rotations where it's the same guys at the same spot every single game. Well, he didn't. He made adjustments. He did just that. And it turned out, it just happened to turn out that neither the starters or the bench could really D up or play any kind of team ball offensively. Now, I I will say, uh, I'll give the I hate Tibbs crowd one thing. There are some concerns here with the defensive scheming. And it's never been my favorite type of scheme. I've complained about this before. It's not the 90s and it's not the early 2000s anymore either. Like, man, this whole this whole drop-off scheme where our perimeter defenders just cheat off their man and they sag towards the paint, that's dinosaur shit, man. Like, that, that's not... It's 2023. Or, you know, 2022, 2023. The paint is not the number one threat anymore in this league. It's about shooting. It's all about shooting. You gotta make the, def- the offense... Work for their buckets. You have to play tighter and force them to to drive. The Cavs, I believe, are number one in three-point percentage so far this year. And they certainly were last night. So it's like you, you have Mitchell Robinson down there as that last line of defense. Play a little tighter. You know? Avoid them from taking that jump shot. Prevent that. So I, the scheming is an issue. It's not my favorite type of scheme. I don't like when they just sag. You also can't be, foot, you can't be putting Evan Fournier onto Donovan Mitchell there in the fourth. That was brutal. And I know Cam wasn't getting it done, but I guess between uh, RJ and Fournier, you pick your poison with a better wing defender and you go with Barrett. But Mitchell was just slicing through the Nick defense, threading the needle, going you know through screens and just collapsing the Nick defense and kicking it out, and it was tough. And you know, as bad as Mitchell Robinson has looked this year with the fouling again, he's now had back-to-back games with five fouls. I think three times this season now with five fouls and six games. Part of that may be due to scheming, the way Thibodeau schemes, and you know, Mitch having to pick up his teammates' men and then recover and then by then it's too late and he's whistled so I you know I I don't want to get on Tibbs too much because I believe it's more on the players right now not getting it done and Tibbs is adjusting and all that I do agree that the scheming defensively has is you gotta you can't just stick with that one scheme um yeah it's you know there were some good last night, um, and and I'll give I'll give um, I guess we'll give out the game balls. Uh, the Bing Bong ball amongst the starters goes to Jalen Brunson. Bing Bong. 
I I think Jalen Brunson deserves um, the game ball amongst the starters. Uh, Jalen had 16 points last night, four rebounds, seven assists, shot eight for 19 from the floor, um, three steals. Uh, only turned it over once in 34 minutes. On the season, Brunson is now averaging 18 points, four rebounds, seven assists. 47% from the field, 33% from three, and 74% from the free throw stripe. Two turnovers in these six games on average. Um, yeah, last night I thought Jalen Brunson was okay. Um, it, it was it was his big third quarter that helped the Knicks um, push that lead to nine points entering the final quarter. That was That was led by Brunson. I think he had a dozen of his 16 in that period alone. Um, and he had an assist or two as well in that quarter. Um, so I thought Jalen Brunson continues to play well. Um, and he's gotten the most bing bong balls so far. Um, and then off the bench, I got to give it to Isaiah Hartenstein. 12 points, 9 boards, an assist. Um, 60% from the floor. He had a steal, a block, and one turnover. And he played 27 minutes last night. On the season, Isaiah Hartenstein. Um, Hartenstein. Sorry. Got to do that all year. Nine points, eight boards, and a block per game. But yeah, I, I thought he played well last night. He continues to do the little things. right? He's doing a bit of everything offensively. He's playing hard on the glass. Um, he's got a nice touch at the rim, continues to use that floater in the in-between game. But, um, yeah, those are our two guys who really didn't play awful last night. <laughs> but overall, the Knicks, you know, not great. They missed eight of their 16 free throws. Shot just 50% there. Um, 108 total points. Yeah, man, not great. Just, I'm starting to hear like tanking nonsense again. Some of these Knicks fans are just already making me laugh. Listen, like I said, at the end of the day, the Knicks went into the week with a tough schedule. A tough four-game slate. Orlando, Charlotte, Milwaukee, and Cleveland. And I said I wanted to see them come out of it 2-2 two and two at worst. They came out of it 2-2. Two and two. Um, they won the two that they needed to win, Orlando, Charlotte, and they lost the two that they were expected to lose. So I'm not going to be sitting here crying, bitching, moaning, soaking in all the negative just because my team, who was under 500 last season, is off to a 3-3 three and three start, six games in, with a fairly tough schedule in more than half of those games. I'm sorry, I'm just not going to. I'm not going to be negative. Not now. Now I do get it. The Knicks are in that dangerous, weird spot. I'm sorry. I just had to pause it for a second. I lost my spot. I had to... Uh take care of a few things. I had somebody just call my name and hopefully that didn't pick up on the mic but usually does because I live in a house with 8,000 people. Loud people. Um, and my studio is, is missing a wall and I'm not shitting you. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> I'm missing a fourth wall. Uh, where were we? We were talking about not wanting to just doom in the negative right now, right? Um, but I do understand it. Um, they're kind of in that weird, dangerous spot where you you want them to thrive and win, but there's always that risk that if they do try to go for wins this year and they fall short of the playoffs or they lose immediately in the play-in tournament and they're kind of without a top-notch pick. So I understand that. But I think you stay the course and you, you risk that. And you keep trying to build a winning culture because I think that matters. And I think millennials, Gen Z fans, they don't understand that. You know, they've grown up and they've experienced this loser's way all their lives. So I understand why they're like that, wanting to tank. 
they've grew up with shitty Knicks teams and they weren't born in the nineties or, or they weren't old enough in the nineties and neither really was I. Um, so, you know, they love that participation shit. They love losing. It feels like, but like, I, I just feel like trying and putting in an effort to win is important. And the Knicks have young, good players. So you need to try and get them to win, learn to win. You can't just keep trying to lose, keep trying to lose, because that shit does not work. It's very hit or miss. And But the difference in, in, in the Knicks and other teams, a lot of other teams, is, is that's where it stops. The Knicks have young, good players, right? They need that star. The Knicks have good players, role players. They don't have great players. Star players. Randall's a good player. Barrett's a good player. Probably a number two, number three on any other great team. Same with Randall. D- D- Brunson. Like, there's no number one star player is going to be a perennial all star in the conversation of, of all the superstars. Like, that's there's none of that on the Knicks, and none of them are going to be that either. But hopefully they can win some games this season and they attract maybe that star power and they pay someone money or they give up prospects to get this star. Unlike this GM we have who I don't want to go back to the, you know, the whole Donovan Mitchell thing, but it's hard to when you're watching what he did last night, botching that. Um, I, I really do wish he didn't shy away and just gave them that third unprotected pick. And I know you don't want to gut your roster, this and that, but I would have taken the risk. Um, I go back and forth all the time on that. And here I am again, just going back. It just, just, it's hard. Um, But hopefully again, at the end of the day, we have a good solid season and we can kind of try to build that culture up again. Um, I'm not going to doom and gloom right now. I'm not, I'm not going there. Uh, I think you still got a shot to make this a decent season. You're three and three. People are acting like we're zero and six, one and five, two and four already. We're three and three, and their only losses came against the Grizzlies, the Bucks, in the fucking Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs. Like, let's relax. We'll be fine. We've won the games we're supposed to win so far, and we've lost the ones that we were expected to lose. Pipe it down. Hopefully, we can keep developing this young talent, and, and we can attract some star power. And but that's that's a long ways to go. Right now, we just want to win. And, and grow. And that's, you know, we're, we're doing a decent job at that so far. So we'll see what happens. All right. So that's it. Let's head to our final break, get back, and we'll wrap it up with the trivia question of the day. Stay with us. We also have a website now for BD4. If you go to bd4blog.com, you can find the blog, the podcast links, And also where to find me on social media. Just go to bd4blog.com. Studio 69 Productions is a podcast production agency created by Leo Rodriguez to allow content creators to market their podcast. It's an online platform that will market your podcast or any other project that you're working on. Get in touch with Leo Rodriguez from Studio 69 Productions. You can find Studio 69 Productions on Instagram at Studio69NJ. Studio 69 Productions, where dreams are heard and born. All right, welcome back to the show. Sorry for that little delay. I am your host, RJ Carbone. Let's get to it. Let's wrap it up with our trivia. So for this episode, episode 426, our NYYNYK MMA trivia question of the day is... To name five Knicks from the 1973 championship team. That's it. Name five Knicks from the 1973 championship team. Let me know the answer wherever you can reach me. If you get the answer correct, I'll give you a shout out in the next episode. 
If you don't get it correct, I'll let you know what the answer is in the next show. I'll text you, I'll DM you, I'll answer back from wherever you reached out. Guys, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next episode of BD4. As for this one, 426, it's in the books. Hopefully the Knicks start playing better. And they pick up a win against the Atlanta Hawks at the Garden on Wednesday night. Happy Halloween, everybody. And um, I'm going to go watch some more Halloween with Michael Myers on TV. All right. I'll see you guys. Thanks. Ciao. Later. This episode was brought to you by Anchor.